Welcome fifth graders to another bonus video on long division using area models. But this time our long division includes decimals. What? Yes, you can do it. So here is my question for today. One of them. We're going to do two questions. We have 64 and 18 hundredths divided by three. So we set up our area model using our familiar box. Again, we place our dividend in the boxes split up by place value. So I have 60 and a four, and here's one important difference. I put my decimal, that's this big old red dot here. I put my decimal where it is in my question. Then I include my one tenth and eight hundredths. So it looks like this. This is how we begin. The rest of it is pretty much the same. Again, we're gonna use the tens trick. So how many times does three go into six? It goes in twice and I have a zero left over. Three times 20 is 60. So I subtract from my 60 and I get a zero. Terrific, nothing to carry forward into my next box. So I go to my next box. How many times does three go into four? Well, it goes in once. One times three is three. When I subtract that, I have one left over. That's gonna carry forward into my next box, right up here. And I'm gonna add it. But I'm not gonna add one plus one. I'm going to add it here because it's, this is my decimals. So it's not, it's more like a 10 rather than a one. That's the, that's the biggest difference here. So now I ask myself, how many times does three go into 11? Not two, 11. It goes in three times. I put my three down here. Three times three is nine. I subtract 11 take away nine is two. That's my leftover and it goes up here and I don't add it to my eight. I put it in front of my eight. That's my biggest difference with this method. How many times does three go into 28? Well, it goes in nine times and that gives me 27 and I subtract. Now, normally with long division, that would be my remainder. But what we can do with decimals is by adding a zero to this right here, I can add as many zeros as I like and it doesn't change the value. Well, I can do the same thing with my box. So I can take my one outside the box and put it with a zero and keep dividing. And you can do this as many times as you want because you can use as many zeros as you want and not change the value of the dividend. But I mean, at some point you've got to stop, right? Well, we're going to stop right after this. So how many times does three go into 10? It goes in three times. Three times three is nine and we get one. And you can see that I can just keep going forever and ever and ever. And what that's called, it's called a repeating decimal. Yeah, there's such a thing. But I'm gonna stop for now because nobody needs all that. So here's, here's what we do now to determine our total quotient. We add our whole numbers together, which gives me 21. I place my decimal point right here and I don't add these together, I write them in their place value. Now I went a little nuts here, I'm sorry. And what we do to indicate that this is a repeating decimal is we put a little hat over the very last number. And what that means is if I kept dividing and dividing and dividing, it would just be three to infinity and beyond, which I don't wanna do that because ain't nobody got time for that. So this is my quotient. And if you check it with multiplication, if you multiply 21, and 393 thousandths by three, you will not get exactly this answer, but you will get very, very, very close. And with decimals, close is okay. So that's how we do this with a single digit divisor. What I'm gonna cover in my next video is what happens if your divisor is a decimal two. <gasps> Stay tuned and you'll find out. Bye now.